So welcome to the Compounding Center Connections, where we talk about different health conditions with our partner practitioners. I'm your host, Jay Gill, a compounding pharmacist from the Compounding Center in Leesburg, Virginia. At the Compounding Center, we collaborate with practitioners and create custom medications to help our patients get better. The information discussed today is for informational purposes only, not for diagnosis. And in this episode, I'm excited uh, to have Dr. Kevin Chan, a senior clinical director at Treehouse Eyes in Tyson's Corner, Virginia. Welcome, Dr. Chan. Thanks for having me. So, Dr. Chan, before we get started, please uh, share a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers. Sure. So, hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Kevin Chan. I am the senior clinical director at Treehouse Eyes. And uh, my educational background includes, uh, I did my undergrad in um, Western University in Canada. And then I move on to my graduate degree studying optometry, uh, complete my optometry degree along with my Master of Sciences uh, at the New England College of Optometry in Boston, Massachusetts. And then I start my career um, in Maryland and Virginia since then. Great, great, thank you. So I've had the pleasure of getting a tour of your place. And after the tour, I felt like this is something that I wanted to uh, share with our listeners, information about Treehouse Eyes. And one of the first things that comes to mind is, how did the name Treehouse Eyes come about? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, um, when we first started, you know, the co-founder of Treehouse Eyes, want to open up the eyes of you know, the general public about, they want to uh, change the overall perception of how, you know, the public view eye care, because compared to many other physical health and other things, healthcare is actually um, prioritized not as the most important um, uh, healthcare in general. So when we first launched this company uh, in 2016, we want to um, change the overall perception and the recognition from the general public about eye care. Specifically, Treehouse Eyes is designated for uh, treating myopia solely for um, a condition called myopia. Myopia is also known as nearsightedness, which means the um, vision would be blurry when they see far away, a distance. And uh, this condition is happening more so in the uh, um, young kids and uh, uh, adolescents. So most of the time they would come in for seeking a, a specific consultation for specific treatment for their myopia condition. Gotcha. And you know, in my effort to get started this uh, episode with you, I totally forgot to mention that, you know, today's discussion is going to be on, you know, childhood myopia and Treehouse Eyes is specializes uh, in, uh, ch- in treating patients with uh, childhood myopia. Uh, could you talk to us a little bit about what is childhood myopia? Sure. Um, so myopia actually affect children, as we um, you know said earlier. Um, it happened more so in children and teenager. And this condition back in um, two decades ago, it wasn't a big concern because uh, we we haven't have a lot of uh, um, children who are accelerating uh, in terms of the growth of myopia. But in the past uh, decade or so, we're seeing a up, uptick and surge of um, prevalence of myopia. Back in 1972, we were seeing only 25% of the um, population having myopia. But uh, back in uh, 2010, we we're also seeing, you know, at least 66% uptake of the prevalence of myopia nationwide and worldwide. So it's been quite a concerning uh, health issue in the eye care community. So we want to do something about it before uh, the child get worse over time. Gotcha. So um, could you uh, uh, talk to us like, uh, you know, what is actually happening to the eye? Um, and, uh, you know, what's, uh, w- uh, and what symptoms perhaps a parent uh, should uh, look out for? Yeah, so for a lot of parents, I'm seeing, you know, they have been so used to bring the kids for general checkup for the eye exam. And most eye doctor would prescribe them, you know, regular glasses and then uh, change the prescription a little higher in order to help them see clearer. That is one of the um, uh, biggest change that they are seeing upon the eye exam. 
but we found that you know having eyeglasses alone cannot resolve the problem because having blurry vision is just one of the symptoms of myopia. Our goal is not to just to change the prescription itself. It's more to do with the physiological elongation of the eye. Specifically, our treatment is to provide uh, some remedy or at least able to slow down the progression of myopia physiologically so that you know your symptoms would you know uh, slowly be stabilized. Gotcha. Um, how do you diagnose somebody with myopia other than you know like you, you talked about the elongation of the eye? Um, what kind of tests or what do you do to diagnose um, a myopia? Yeah, so typically uh, our patient were referred by the general eye care provider and they would do a comprehensive eye exam, checking the visual acuity and see how, how good the visions are at distance and near and intermediate. So um, they would do a full uh, bucket list of eye exam in order to make sure the patient is healthy enough. But most of the time, myopia is always to be the one that stands out because it's one mm -hmm. of the most common eye care condition happening in young kids. And uh, by the time they come see me in our uh, office, we typically would do uh, all sorts of um, assessment and evaluation, including you know, topography, which is the uh, measurement to take a look at the, uh, the cornea and the, uh, evaluate the shape and the contour, make sure there's no uh, any other abnormality on the cornea. We also going to measure um, the axial length, which is the actual uh, eyeball, the size of the eyeball in order to uh, get a baseline measurement. And then we'll be able to, um, once we you know, go through the treatment with the kit, we're able to uh, monitor and evaluate how the treatment progress looks based on the axial length. Gotcha. And basically the overall, you're trying to maintain that axial length or um, uh, that's what you're trying to monitor, right? Throughout the treatment plan? That's correct. Because gotcha. again, we want, we want to, make sure um, it's not just about the prescription. Once we're able to stabilize or slowing down the axial length growth, we're able to see you know, the, the stabilization of the changes of the prescription. Gotcha. So um, what are some treatment options once you diagnose uh, you know, uh, myopia? What are some treatment options do you use? So in terms of uh, intervention for myopia treatment, we typically have three major modalities. Uh, the first one is the orthokeratology, which is um, a type of specialty contact lenses where a patient can actually sleep with, and kind of like a retainer, but for the eyes. Uh, the, the actual mechanism involves um, the corneal reshaping therapy, which would generate a different type of um, light signal uh, for your eyes. By the time the kids wake up in the morning, they no, long, no longer need those lenses. They would take it off and then they would enjoy the uh, vision for the rest of the day without the need of uh, glasses or lenses. And that is one of the um, uh, main intervention for myopia treatment. Another type of intervention, we call it the soft, dual focus, multifocal contact lenses. Um, the, the essential stuff here is that, you know, the, this type of soft lenses can actually alter the light signal, how they enters the eye in order to hit the back of the eye called the retina. Once the retina um, able to receive a different signal, they're able to slow down the actual axial length growth or the eyeball growth. And last but not least is also, uh, we prescribe um, topical low dose atropine for patients who have progressive myopia. And the actual mechanism remain largely unknown. And, but we know that atropine seems to have some correlation in terms of stimulating the cells at the back of the eye, particularly the dopamine level. Study have found that dopamine seems to be related to the uh, axial um, uh, halting over time. So we're seeing that time after time, patient has been very uh, uh, um, responding to the atropine drops and be able to slow down progression of myopia over time. Gotcha, okay. So, um... You know, atropine eye drops, those low dose atropine eye drops that you refer to, uh, we compound hair at the pharmacy. Um, and uh, something that uh, I wanted to sort of take some time and um, 
chat about is sometimes patients that come to our pharmacy wonder why the prescription was not sent to a regular pharmacy, then, a, uh, you know, why are they coming to a compounding pharmacy? And uh, this is by far the uh, biggest question we get asked. And I wanted to sort of take the time to explain this. Uh, you know, the low dose atropine drops that you use are not available at a regular retail pharmacy. These drops have to be compounded at a compounding pharmacy such as ours. And they have to be made in a sterile environment and packaged in an appropriate container. That's why, you know, uh, uh, physicians prescribe to a compounding pharmacy this particular low-dose atropine. They come in multiple different strengths. And, uh, and a compounder, uh, com compounder or a compounding pharmacy is necessary to uh, make this particular formulation. We actually have an educational video that we invite everyone to watch, and I'll make sure to put that uh, link to the video in the description of the episode. Um, but uh, Dr. Chan, now Treehouse has a proprietary program that uh, I was quite impressed with. And, I, and could you share a little bit uh, about this program, what you guys do differently um, at your um, practice? Sure. So um, in Treehouse Size, we're actually using a proprietary algorithm to select you know, the best uh, possible treatment uh, modality for patient depends on their major multiple uh, risk factor for myopia, uh, including age, gender, ethnicity, and um, parental family history of myopia, as well as uh, lifestyle changes. So for example, if a six-year-old kid who is um, of Asian descent, and they come in with two parents who are already myopic or near, having nearsightedness, and then they are not spending time outdoor, essentially, they're mostly, you know, studying inside, then, you know, we were able to find out which specific um, um, treatment option or intervention that will be best suitable for this type of patient. Gotcha. So, you know, you talked about some lifestyle uh, options. Are there any lifestyle recommendations that you make to your patients? Yes. Um, so for young kids, you know, especially since COVID, we have a lot of uh, circumstances where patients are not allowed to, you know, uh, go outside or be able to uh, have outdoor activities. Um, that will actually make a lot of uh, challenges for patient and the parent. Um, study have found that when kids are exposed to uh, outdoor natural light for a certain period of time, they're actually having uh, less changes in their myopia over time. In, the, in other words, the progression of myopia can be delayed or even mitigated over time with increased outdoor time. Gotcha. Wow. Um, any online resources that you may uh, recommend for parents to perhaps uh, read or get more uh, information on? Absolutely. We do have a patient portal and the educational resources in our website uh, in www.treehousesize.com. They will be able to search a lot of information and resources to benefit their kids. And I'll make sure to put the link for Treehouse also on the description of this episode. Um, uh, now, can, uh, can someone get a, uh, let's say, LASIK surgery uh, for this condition? Good question. Um, myopia um, occurs when your eyeball becomes too long. LASIK surgery, uh, by the time they are reaching certain age, usually around 21 or older, or when they consider as a good candidate by the refractive surgeon, yes, uh, those are young adults can undergo LASIK surgery for correcting the vision in the next decade or so. But the key thing here is that LASIK surgery does not um, rectify or uh, doing any mitigation for myopia. Because what we're trying to do during this um, time course is to um, slow down the axial length growth. By the time they're young adult, they're fully reaching maturity. They're not able to you know, do anything to slow down the axial length growth. So LASIK does not directly impact the back of the eye. They can gotcha. only um, correct the vision 
you know, so that they can see well without the need of glasses. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, could you share with us, why do you think this has become such a big issue uh, now? Can you share your thoughts on that? Yeah, so we're seeing more and more parents are so concerned about their kids, you know, having so much time on the screen these days, and they don't have enough outdoor time. And every time they went to see the eye doctor, they're seeing, you know, um, time after time, prescription is getting worse and worse over time. And parents are wise enough to ask me that question, you know, there should be something out there that we can do in order to help our kids. They know that glass may not be the only solution for them. In fact, we know by now, okay, glasses is not a solution for myopia progression. There's other interventions that are available which are better for uh, this condition. So uh, if parents are uh, having issue with like seeing the kids squinting or having headache, you know, may not be able to pay attention to, you know, anything in general, that could be something to do with the eye health. And it's very important for them to bring them uh, to the regular checkup uh, for diagnosing myopia. And then once the uh, condition is diagnosed, it's um, definitely recommended for them to bring into our uh, consultation center in order to figure out what can be best for the kids. And uh, do you work with some of the local uh, optometrists or uh, uh, ophthalmologists uh, uh, locally? And uh, do they refer uh, patients to you? just because you specialize in childhood myopia? Yeah, absolutely. We have a wide networking uh, opportunity with local optometrists, eye care provider, including ophthalmologists. They are uh, a great uh, referral source for our patient just because not everyone uh, do myopia management in the eye care community. So we are fortunate enough to be able to gain a lot of reputation and trust from the eye care community and uh, many patients are actually referred by their local eye care providers. Well, Dr. Chan, thank you very much for taking the, join, uh, taking the time to join us for this episode. You've shared a wealth of knowledge. Now, I'm sure everybody wants to know, how can someone reach you for consultation or even for more information? Absolutely. So feel free to reach out to our website, www.treehouseeyes.com or contact me directly at kevin.chen at treehousesize.com. I also have um, a TEDx talk. Uh, I think um, Dr. Gill will be able to share the link with you afterward. So feel free to uh, check out that educational website in order to open up your eyes about childhood myopia. I, I'm sure you'll be benefit from this. Well, I will make sure to put um, the links, uh, your email address and the link to your TED talk video. Quite uh, very informational, uh, the, uh, the Dead Dog video. Um, thank you. I'd like to uh, sort of kind of end the episode by saying thank you uh, for tuning into the Compounding Center Connections podcast. We hope the information presented today uh, to be helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to reach out to me at j at compoundingcenter.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast channel, The Compounding Center Connections, and stay tuned for our future episodes. Thank you, Dr. Chan. Thanks for having me.